eight days in hospice, no food, no water. His head's starting to kind of cave in because he's losing brain mass. He's like, you know, rigor mortis is setting in. This boy's still alive. And his dad intuitively knew, like, I need to get oxygen to his brain. Like, what can I, like, I need to, to do something. And the family, you know, they had to make that like tough decision that's like impossible to make, which is like they were having to let their son go. Welcome to Sunny Side Up Podcast. I am your host, David, and I am very pleased to meet you, Sam. I heard that you do hyperbarics, and I want to hear all about that because I'm super, super pumped. Super interesting. So how did you how did you get started with hyperbarics? Um, it's kind of a long story, but yeah, thanks for having me on. Great to meet you too, David. Um, hyperbarics came into my family's life, um, through a patient of my mother's actually. So my mom is double board certified in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. She has a Harvard background, um, a deep, deep understanding of cellular biology as an oncologist. So she was looking at cancer cells and, and doing, you know, ra experiments on radioactive isotopes of iodine and stuff like that. So she really gets cellular biology at its at its most fundamental space. And then she transitioned into functional medicine and regenerative medicine um, and kind of blending that Eastern and Western approach. And one of her patients who was not doing very well, um, she had told him that, like, you know, you got to stop drinking. You got to, you know, make all these changes or, you know, it's not going to end well for you. And he had this tooth infection and she sends him to a biological dentist and under the dentist's breath, he goes, man, if we could just get you in a hyperbaric chamber, that infection would be knocked out in no time. And this was like, you know, 12 years ago plus, and there weren't clinics around very many, you know, definitely none here in Texas. And he starts calling all his buddies that own hospitals and, you know, they're like, no way, no can do. We can't get you in a chamber. Um, three months later, he comes back for his three month follow up. And my mom looks at his labs and goes, wow, like this must be your kid brother's labs. Like I'm good, but I'm not that good. Like you must've stopped drinking. And he's like, nope. And she's like, well, what'd you do? And he's like, well, I got, I bought a hyperbaric chamber, put it in my garage and I got in it every single day for the last three months. <laughs> and she was just blown away. She had never seen such a drastic shift in labs. And it wasn't just like certain blood markers. It was hormones. It was everything. Like his, his entire health had like upgraded and so she starts digging into it more and realizes how powerful this healing modality is that's being like, you know, sheltered from the masses and, you know, kind of restricted by the FDA in certain ways. And so he ended up financing their first couple chambers. My parents have um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy clinics here in, in Austin as well. Um, and, and, then the rest is kind of history. Now, thousands and thousands of patients later, they've, you know, we've seen just tons of miracles. Um, and then in my own life, I had a really bad head trauma. Um, and I got jumped downtown and, and had like a really bad head trauma and was felt like I was done, like my brain was just gone, I could hardly think could hardly speak. And so I was able to heal that really fast getting in the chamber twice a day. And then um, a year and a half later, I developed an autoimmune disease in my brain where the aquaporin molecule of corn, which is like this trumpet shaped molecule was like crossing the blood brain barrier, you know, leaking in through my gut and causing this autoimmune reaction in my brain. And it took us like, you know, thousands of dollars worth of blood work to figure that out and like finally get to the bottom of it. Cause I was exhibiting symptoms of like early onset Alzheimer's. And so my wife thought she was losing me. So I ended up doing a few hundred sessions in the chamber straight with like an anti-inflammatory diet and um, some peptides and a bunch of other really cool tools that we had available like lasers and um, light therapy. And I came back stronger than ever in my entire life and went on to build a business during the pandemic that did like 20 million in revenue and at, by myself as a solopreneur doing medical supply distribution. and. And I attribute that to hyperbarics. Like I had struggled in school. I had struggled in general with a lot of things in life, just growing up with, you know, some head injuries I'd had in my childhood and just other like learning disabilities, et cetera. And after those few hundred sessions of hyperbarics, my entire life changed. And so I've, I've been intimately involved in hyperbarics for myself, you know, like six, seven years. And then, um, what really changed everything for me with hyperbarics that made me want to dedicate my life to it 
um, I was at dinner with Peter Thiel and a friend of mine, Stefan Georgie, and we were, and a few of other, few other of my friends in LA. And I wanted to talk to Peter about hyperbarics because I was thinking like, you know, one day if, you know, if I really push with hyperbarics, like there's, you know, the FDA doesn't like it. Big pharma doesn't like it. You know, like I, it would be great if Peter had my back, you know? So I really wanted to impress upon him, like the power of hyperbarics. And Stefan had overheard part of my conversation with him about this man who we had brought back from being brain dead, essentially after a really bad head trauma. And four days after that dinner, he calls me and he has, says, hey, Sam, can you help my friend Sayum? Um, can you help his son? And I look at the GoFundMe and I see that their son is in hospice currently. And at that point, he'd been in hospice for like four days. Um, and I was like, yeah, like get me on the phone. Um, and ultimately, eight days in hospice, no food, no water. He's, you know, his head starting to kind of cave in because he's losing brain mass. He's like, you know, rigor mortis is setting in and this boy's still alive. And his dad intuitively knew, like, I need to get oxygen to his brain. Like, what can I, like, I need to, to do something. And, you know, um, the, the family, you know, they had to make that like tough decision that's like impossible to make, which is like they were having to let their son go. Um, but the dad saw something and knew that his son was still fighting. And so after I get on that call, I was like, yeah, come down to Austin, we'll treat you. And, and, um, and they couldn't, you know, they didn't, they couldn't make it. And so I just ended up putting them on a plane, getting them an Airbnb, getting them down here. And we put their son in the chamber. And even after just a few sessions, we could see something changing. Like his eyes were lighting up a little bit. He was getting a little looser, you know, fast forward a couple hundred sessions later, he's eating solid food, no more feeding tube. His, his muscles are fully relaxed instead of being like, you know, stuck tight up. And when a father tells you like, Sam, like this father's day would have been different if you hadn't showed up, you know, like, like I have my son, you know, like that just like blew my mind. Cause I was like, wow, like how, how is it a reality right now when there's a solution, you know, that provides hope to families? How is it a reality right now that not every single family in the country knows that this exists, you know? And like, that's our reality. Like thousands and thousands of parents with kids with brain injuries have like end up letting them go because they don't want them to live like a vegetable you know and like there's hope to not only like keep them alive but to like bring back a ton of brain function you know i'm not saying it's 100 percent cure they're going to be back 100 percent, but there are some cases where they come back you know close to 100 percent. you know like there's a little girl who drowned and you know was you know lost lost a pulse for hours and like got her back you know and she's like you know high scoring SAT in high school now and stuff like that. Like, like, the, and these stories happen, and but they only spread news locally. And then the news dies down and the sensation dies down. And because we can't market like hyperbarics as a cure or as a treatment for any disease states, like the FDA and FTC have limitations on how you can market um, F, uh, like a medical device, which for good reason, you know, you don't want charlatans out there pushing snake oil. But there is so much proof that shows the power of this device that makes it like, you know, asinine that we don't have more awareness of it in public in general. And in the US, there's only 14 approved use cases, FDA approved for hyperbarics. And really? in Russia, Israel, there's over a thousand all over the world. Hyperbarics is a first line of defense for burn victims, for head injuries. Um, in Europe, in some countries, you can get um, like government health coverage for like autoimmune disorders with hyperbarics because of the way that it affects the immune system and, and affects inflammation. And here in the US, they shove it in the basement. They say it's a bomb, it could blow up, it's dangerous. And like, that's just not the case. When you're pressurizing with ambient air, there's no fire risk. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of my story of how I really got into it, like, and why I'm so passionate about it. Because not only do I want to see families all over the world and all over the US having access to it for brain injured children, but I want to see our humans as a species in general having access to this simple medicine that can, you know, assist in longevity, assist in performance optimization, etc. So um, yeah, so I don't know if you want me to like explain the basics behind hyperbarics, but um, I'll kind of let you lead oh. with some more questions. That's thank you for sharing that. That's a, <laughs> that's a ton. So one question that I have that I don't want to forget before we get into kind of like the nitty gritty is 
how did this come about? Because like you said, it's not, it's not a, a history tested form of medicine. Like it's pretty newer. So how did, how did hyperbarics become a thing? <laughs> Ironically, it's actually very old. So hyperbaric technology has been understood since like pre automobile, you know, even Alexander the uh -oh. great went underwater in a glass dome because they understood that pressure affected pain and recovery. And so really, and then you've got, you know, pre automobile, you've got hyperbaric chambers being drawn by horses <laughs> because before pain medicine, you know, they had like, they realized that pressure helped with pain and inflammation. And so they'd, you know, kind of put you underwater and you'd have a tube going up. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was crude hyperbarics, but it was the same principle. Um, and that kind of brings me to like the, the basic tenets underlying hyperbarics is um, Henry's law. So like gas under pressure enters a solution. So it's like very simple, you know, high school physics, middle school physics, gas under pressure enters a solution. That's how you get a can of soda because you pressurize the carbon dioxide into the water or the sugar water. Um, your body is mostly water, right? And uh, uh, our plasma carries a bunch of stuff. And so traditionally, when you breathe in oxygen um, or breathe in air, the oxygen binds to the red blood cells. And so you're limited to the amount of oxygen you can absorb in your system by the amount of circulating red blood cells you have at any given moment, unless you put the body under pressure. When you put the body under pressure, that oxygen gets micronized into the plasma. So now you have plasma saturation of oxygen that can increase up to like 2000%, you know? So like 90 minutes at, you know, two atmospheres plus a pressure, you're, you're approaching, you know, a 2000% oxygen load in your plasma. And that plasma perfuses five times deeper into tissue than just the red blood cell because the red blood cell gets to the end of the capillary where it gets narrow and bounces back. Plasma keeps going. And so now you're delivering oxygen in that plasma directly into tissue that it would normally have to like wait for oxygen to be transported cell to cell to cell. And what oxygen does in tissues is reduce inflammation. It's a very potent anti-inflammatory. And then it also provides the building block for ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy molecule of the body. Think of it like your energy currency of the body. And so you've got systemic reduction in inflammation happening passively from the oxygen which frees up all the energy that your body was using to try to reduce inflammation. So you've got that extra energy and then it's creating extracellular energy on top of that by helping produce more ATP and it's increasing mitochondrial function. Um, it's leading to neurogenesis. It's increasing microcirculation and in increasing microcirculation. Now you're getting more oxygen driven throughout the body. It upregulates anti-aging genes, downregulates um, pro-inflammatory genes, and a host of other things. I mean, stem cell proliferation after 20 sessions of 90 minutes at two atmospheres, there's like an up to eight X circulation of your own endogenous, like your own internal stem cells, like progenitor stem cells from the bone marrow. So that's pretty awesome because people go spend like 50 K to go to Panama or Mexico to get stem cell therapy. And here you could come get in the hyperbaric chamber 20 times in, in tight succession and jack up your stem cells. So yeah, that's kind hmm. of the basic science behind it. And it's been around, for centuries, you know? <laughs> um, okay. I yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like in your, in your opinion, where would you say the technology is with hyperbarics? Like, do you think there's a long way to go in increasing the technology and improving it? Or do you think it's like pretty good now? I mean, there's always room for improvement, but do you think it's, do you think it's good now? So like in your opinion, hyperbaric tech because it's so simple and it's just pressure and air and what we've seen through a lot of research is you don't even need to add supplemental oxygen to have a benefit like just putting the body under pressure like that compresses the air to so there's twice as many molecules so even though you're still breathing in 21 percent oxygen with ambient air there's twice as much oxygen in that 21 percent. so as you breathe that in it's getting micronized into your plasma so a friend of mine was hiking in malaysia and he sends me this picture and it's a, uh, it's a hyperbaric chamber, like in the jungle with like a solar panel running a compressor, no supplemental oxygen. And like the locals, like, you know, people in the jungle are like treating big, like wounds and infections and illnesses. 
because they knew, you know, they understood it. Like they had gotten the chamber donated to them or something. And I was like, there's a perfect example of how simple this wow. technology is like no electronics. There's power to run the compressor. And then you could have power running an oxygen generator or you could have oxygen tanks, but you know, without, you know, not even needing the oxygen, just power running a compressor in a pressure vessel that's approved for human use, you know, human occupancy, that's all you really need. So the tech hasn't changed much. Um, it hasn't changed much at all, like, you know, since inception, pretty much like, you know, for instance, I'm putting a chamber in my garage, that's 12 and a half feet long by 64 inches in diameter, so I can fit my whole family in it. And this was used in the 70s, like this is like a really old chamber, but these welds last, it's steel, it's never going to break down. And I'm doing that so I can have my whole family in the chamber. But I'm also doing it to prove to people, like, you don't need a brand new chamber, you don't need you know, something flashy with leather on the interior or anything like that. You actually don't want a bunch of chemicals in there that can get, you know, off gas and pressurize into your body. Um, and so just a simple tank with simple compressor and oxygen source, that's all you really need. Where I do see the technology developing is stacking additional modalities and adding additional components um, into the hyperbaric chamber. So like pulse electromagnetic frequency, PEMF is something that I want to see like added into the beds. I'm working on a project with that. Um, I'd love to see sound and vibration um, being added in to increase the parasympathetic response. Um, I'd love to see light therapy added in. And there are, you know, some people that are using, you know, light therapy for wound healing in hyperbarics or, um, you know, other benefits of red light therapy. But that's kind of where I see the hyperbaric technology evolving into is where you're getting more than just hyperbarics inside of a chamber. Um, and so, I, and actually what, you know, with my vision for what I want to do with hyperbarics, I saw that there were a lot of people that were in such a stressed response or such a stressed state, their nervous system was stuck in that sympathetic dominance and they were in pain and tight and they just didn't have the patience to get through like, you know, four, three, four, five hyperbaric sessions to feel better, you know, cause some people feel better immediately after one session. Sometimes it takes a little time to feel a difference depending on how sick you are or how stressed you are. And so my business beam hyperbarics peace on demand. So that's the slogan peace on demand. So I'm, I provide parasympathetic nervous system activation alongside hyperbarics so that the first day you come in, like right away, you feel something different. I've got a, a suite of modalities and it's like a 20 minute to 30 minute treatment and you just feel extremely relaxed and and it happened without drugs without alcohol without a substance and it was your own body helping you feel relaxed with the assistance of physics you know like really medicine has taken this whole new turn with with pharmaceuticals and uh, western medicine saves lives no doubt right but it also keeps a lot of people sick um with pharmaceuticals you know that are causing more um side effects and causing the nervous system to stay stuck in that sympathetic state and you really need to be in a parasympathetic state to activate healing in the body and to activate anti-aging um, properties in the body. And so, you know, you see mental health being such an issue right now. You see all these wearables coming out, you know, showing people their stress levels, et cetera. Like people are becoming aware of like stress is the killer, you know? And so hyperbarics does induce parasympathetic response, but it can take a few sessions to kind of get over the claustrophobia or the tight or like, or feeling in a confined space. Um, but like, I basically saw an opportunity to provide like parasympathetic nervous system activation alongside it, which is going to be a game changer for people, show them something day one. And when you have that shift of like, wow, my body feels relaxed. I feel great. How did, how did that happen with just physics? You're way more open to hearing the truth from me about hyperbarics and how just physics can give you this great benefit with oxygenating your plasma and and providing all these other benefits in the, in the body. Whereas if I'm just trying to tell you the truth and you haven't felt something yet, you're going to be more skeptical. Your confirmation biases, your programming are going to be kind of stuck in play. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of, that was like the angle where I saw that I could make a difference um, and provide that alongside hyperbarics. Um, and, and, and um, yeah, that's kind of, that's where beam hyperbarics was born. Okay. So, with hyperbarics, what kind what kinds of illnesses or injuries do they really help the most? 
So I would say the most acute shift, like where you see a massive change would be traumatic brain injuries. So everyone in Austin that knows me knows that if they get a concussion or they have a friend that gets a concussion, like they call me up, I'll treat them for free. Like, you know, we'll get them in the chamber. If you catch that concussion within 72 hours of the event and treat three, four times in succession, you'll have zero post concussion syndrome. And this is like, you know, we've even, you know, my parents and uh, did their own little clinical trial at ATX hyperbarics. And they showed like 99.9%, you know, like if you, if you did, if you came within 72 hours and then did a few sessions, zero post concussion syndrome. And so like, it's, you know, and you think like with those types of results, why don't they put every kid that gets a concussion in a chamber? Or why aren't the high school football teams all over this? And it's like, there's just this concussion denial, you know, and it's a, it's an epidemic. There's like millions and millions of concussions throughout the country that go through this six month plus process, dark room, no light, you know, like just post concussion syndrome. And you look at all the PTSD and veterans um, that's caused by a lot of traumatic brain injury. And, you know, you look at the veteran suicide rate and you see that like almost all the suicides have a cofactor of either PTSD or traumatic brain injury. And when you look at that and you see like, how are we letting this happen to our veterans? Like when they could have access to chambers, like there's plenty of people with centers that are ready and willing to treat veterans and they just don't know about it. They don't have the access. They don't have the funding. And there's been a bill that's just been like stuck in Congress for years, like trying to make this available outside of the VA because the VA has finally allowed it, but like it's a six month wait list. And what happens during those six months if you're in a really bad way in your mind, you know? And so there's a coalition called Treat Now that um, is like, you know, over a couple hundred clinics throughout the country. And they in the out of the 20,000 veterans that they've treated that have gone through full treatment protocols, like the veterans that completed their entire treatment protocol, out of those 20,000 veterans, there was only two suicides, which is like a massive reduction in the suicide rate across veterans in general. And it's just like unheard of, you know? And um, so if we have something that's, that's that powerful, like it should be more well known. And so that's one of my missions is to bring the awareness of the power of hyperbarics. Um, and then, you know, in addition to head injuries, you've got anything that involved that is involved with chronic inflammation throughout the body. So cognitive decline, autoimmune, um, you know, arthritis, all these things that are related to chronic inflammation, a lot of those chronic inflammatory diseases have a foundation in actually like leaky gut um, from a variety of factors that I won't get into. But the best way to heal the gut is to reduce the inflammation in the gut and then get a bunch more oxygen and stem cells into that area to heal and repair the gut. And then the inflammation in the body starts to subside. And so the, the ripple effects of healing the gut, which hyperbarics does really well, um, are just outstanding and lead to, you know, healing a host of other things. And then you have the other side of the coin of people who use it for performance optimization. Like a lot of our favorite athletes are using hyperbarics and have been for decades and they just don't talk about it. You know, it's their secret weapon, you know, like some of these guys with like 30, 40 year careers, you know, they're like, yeah, they're getting on podcasts now after they retired. And they're like, yeah, I, I got in that chamber five days a week, my entire career, you know, some of them even more. And they're like, that's what kept me young. And people would give me a hard time about it, but it was, it was what I would do. And it's, it's what got me there. And you think about what blood doping is, right? Where you pull out some blood, centrifuge it, take out the red blood cells, keep them on ice, and then inject them right before your race, right? Or right before your event. And blood doping is illegal now for competitive sports. Um, but think about what you're doing. You know, that's increasing your oxygen carrying capacity throughout the race and giving more oxygen equals more energy for your muscles. But you think about getting in a hyperbaric chamber, compressing all that extra oxygen into your plasma, which stays in the plasma over the next four hours, you know, as it slowly gets used up by the body, you're going to have a, a massively increased edge in performance during that time. Then you think about recovery and lowering the inflammation and providing all that energy for healing and building, rebuilding muscle and then increasing the stem cell circulation, you know, which goes down as we age. And you see how hyperbarics is a massive performance increase, not to mention all flooding your brain with all that additional oxygen 
like people in the chamber were like, oh man, my brain was like lit up. Like I, I had, was having all these creative thoughts. Like I had more energy, I could focus better. And so some people utilize the chamber to do deep work. Like they'll bring their laptop in, they'll get some deep work done. Um, they'll get on calls. And so it's, it's a brain enhancer as well. And you look at guys like Joe Rogan, you know, he's been doing hyperbarics now for a while and he's a big proponent of hyperbarics and he's right here in Austin. And, um, and you look at what it's done for him. Like he, he credits hyperbarics with a huge amount of like the, the progress he's made with his brain from fights and stuff like that and his recoveries. And, um, it's great to have people like that with such a large audience talking about hyperbarics. Um, and then you look at like the Kardashians, like they have them in their homes. I was speaking with the son of the builder of their homes. And he was like, yeah, we put hyperbaric chambers in all their homes when we were building their homes, you know? And then you've got, um, you know, Michael Phelps is a big pro of hyperbarics. Um, you've got LeBron James. And then, you know, one of the most surprising uh, that I recently found out is Elon Musk actually has a hyperbaric chamber in his garage. Um, a buddy of mine who was working on the, um, the some of the fund transfers from the middle east for his bio to twitter was was uh sitting with him at his at uh, at his house and like saw the chamber in the garage and it was one of his friends that actually installed it they won't tell me what model <laughs> that it is but you know nonetheless look at the top perform one of the top performers in the world arguably elon musk you know where his where is his mind where is he put deciding to dedicate some of his time inside of a hyperbaric chamber you know because he knows what it can do for longevity and for brain power and there's a study out of Israel done by Shai Afradi, where he showed that 60 sessions of 90 minutes at two atmospheres um, led to an increase in telomere length by up to 30%, you know, and we're having some people replicate that and get even higher increases in telomeres due to their genetics being a little different. And so there's other things that um, factor in aging. And, and as you could see, um, you were talking about Kyle Lasota's video earlier, um, great video on hyperbarics. Um, but he, you know, saw an, uh, a decrease in his Dundon pace, you know, like he, sh a, so his pace of aging, his pace of biological aging slowed down after his 60 sessions. And, and he also healed a host of other things going on with his body. And so, um, yeah, it's a remarkable, powerful tool. And it gets a little weird when you, when you talk about something that can heal so many things, you know, it sounds like snake oil sounds like a panacea, like too good to be true. But when you understand that simple physics application of like gas under pressure enters a solution, and then you understand how important oxygen is for life in our bodies, like, of course, getting that extra oxygen into tissues is going to make such a huge difference. So, yeah. So just to clarify, telomeres are what? So telomeres are the end caps on the end of the DNA strands. And as those telomeres shorten, the cell dies. So we see a correlation between telomere length and cell death. Um, and so theoretically, lengthening your telomeres would provide longer life to those cells. Um, and they're, like I said, they're not, it's not like the be all end all of longevity telomeres. There's been a lot more research that shows there's a bunch of other factors. But when we pull those other factors into something like the Dundon pace, or the glycan age, or, you know, which is related to sugar, glycans and sugars and proteins in the body, we see a marked um, decrease in the aging pace through hyperbarics always. Um, and then you think about what happens when you circulate stem cells, like kids heal super fast because they have tons of circulating stem cells. And as we age, our circulating stem cells get lower and lower and lower. So to be able to boost that by up to eight X using hyperbarics is, is a huge game changer for the aging process. Eight X that's, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So from, from what you're saying, it sounds like some the people that use them like this you were talking about the guys that like the athletes that use them it sounds like they kind of don't talk about it as much and it's not a super well-known thing why do you think that is so i think one of the reasons they're not talking about it so much because they don't want every other athlete using it you know they don't want to show that there's something else outside of themselves that's helping them and obviously every athlete it's understood that their coaches, their training regimens, their diets, like these things and their habits and their lifestyles are a contributing factor to their prowess and their success. But I think there's something about hyperbarics that provides so much of an edge that it's like something they want to kind of keep secret, you know? Um, but again, like guys like Phelps and LeBron James have talked openly about it. 
Um, and there's a video of LeBron James using a hyperbaric chamber. And ironically, he's using like a 1.3 atmosphere chamber, which isn't that much pressure. We really see a lot of the clinical research and massive benefits happening in the body and big results happening when you're at that two atmospheres or higher. And, you know, I'm not saying there aren't any benefits at lower atmospheres, but having a chamber that can go to two atmospheres is really important because that two atmosphere level is where a bunch of really amazing things start happening in the body with, with referring to genetics and to stem cells, et cetera. Like the, you have orders of magnitude more stem cell mobilization in a higher pressure chamber than you do at 1.3 or 1.5 atmospheres. And so, um, but yeah, I think that's just why they're not really talking about it, you know, cause it's that much of an edge for them. Um, and like I said, the FDA doesn't want people talking about what hyperbarics can do, you know, outside of those 14 normal use cases. And there's a new, uh, well, I say new, it's about seven years old, but a researcher whom I respect infinitely, um, by the name of Gerald Pollack. Um, he's a PhD that has done a lot of research on water and what he's discovered about water. And this is kind of akin to like quantum physics, you know, a hundred years ago where physicists were like, ah, get out of here with that. And now today with things like the double slit experiment experiment, we know that quantum physics is undeniable, right? Like it's, it's, it's here, it's real. We're building computers based on it, et cetera. So he's discovered what's called the fourth phase of water. And now the fourth phase of water is um, not liquid and not solid, but it's a little bit firmer. So in one of his experiments, he took two beakers, um, electrified the water to turn it into that fourth phase, and was able to create like a four centimeter bridge of water across the two beakers that was rigid, like firm, just water molecules transferring across like four centimeters. So that showed that something was happening there that was more rigid than a liquid, but not quite solid and frozen because there was movement happening, right? And as he dug deeper into the fourth phase of water and see, saw how it interacts in our bodies, um, he saw that in our cells, there's an area of negatively charged water around every organelle, around every protein, around every like mitochondria, you know, all inside the cell, there's all this negatively charged water around every membrane, around every hydrophilic membrane. And what all those negative charges do in the cell is create potential energy. So imagine you have a cell packed with proteins, packed with mitochondria, packed with all these organelles, and they all have got this negative um, charge around them of fourth phase water. That is what allows proteins to fold properly. And you need proteins to fold properly and in the right speed to have a healthy body and to carry out all your cellular processes. And what happens when you're chronically inflamed is like new water, new molecules don't come into the cells properly. Like the cell walls inflamed messages can't get in and out. You know, you've got this kind of stagnant water in there, low potential energy, and your body's kind of falling apart, you know, and what his research is showing it's, it's incredibly breakthrough research. And like, I I'm, mystified at why the whole world doesn't know about his research about fourth phase water yet because the implications for human health and the fourth phase of water are of massive magnitude and so i'm you know diving deep on his fourth phase water research and in my head it clicks i'm like wait oxygen has a negative charge hyperbarics has to increase fourth phase water right so i do all this research i write up this 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 paper and i email it to him and i'm like hey i think i made this great discovery <laughs> and we get on a call and he's like sam you want the good news or the bad news and i was like all right i'll take the bad news he goes bad news is this isn't your discovery he goes i i figured this out <laughs> seven years ago he goes the good news is i already did all the work i already did all the research and so he sent me his research and it's just it's phenomenal and and it hasn't really made it out in a big way yet and so that's another thing I want to help show people is like at the most fundamental level, our body is the majority water and you can structure that water to be efficient in your cells, to make all your cellular processes efficient through utilizing hyperbarics. You can also do that through grounding. That's why it's so important to go get out and be barefoot on the earth, you know, which it sounds woo woo, but it's like that provides that negative charge into your body, those negative ions, which allow for the water to be structured in your cells so that you can have proper cellular processes. Right. And, but this like epiphany about how hyperbarics increases the amount of fourth phase water in the body has incredible implications for, I think the future of hyperbarics, but also an understanding of why hyperbarics is so effective at reducing inflammation, reducing detox, uh, increasing the detoxification rates 
because what he calls that fourth phase water is easy water because it's an exclusion zone. That negative charge pushes out every bad thing, every bacteria, virus, junk, junk material gets just pushed out of that negative charge zone. So that's why that's how the cells are detoxing. They're using that negative charge, right? And you think like, oh, this makes so much sense, you know, like the, at the fundamental basis and foundation of health is not medications or like systems, it's cells. And at the, f at the fundamental foundation of cells are the elements, which is why mineral balance is so important and why this, the charge and there's electricity in your body. So the electrical charge, the water and the cellular function is really what's at the foundation of our health. But that's not what they're teaching in med school. You know, like that's not what we understand as a culture. So like our culture has been brainwashed into this top down approach instead of this bottom up approach of understanding health. And so I want to help humanity understand health and how from a fundamental perspective, health is driven from physics and the elements, you know, so you've got air and light. And he also discovered that infrared light is a way that to provide that negative charge into the water in your cells as well. And that's why that first light in the morning where there's the most infrared light coming in is so important to expose your body to, you know, human beings are, you know, we have a little bit of that first phase of photosynthesis that occurs in our bodies with this negative charge in the water, which provides potential energy. And so um, in that pursuit of helping people understand it, I have an announcement to make that I am building a team to pursue the X Prize Health Span, um, which was the newest X Prize competition announced uh, by Peter Diamandis. And it's like $101 million in total prize so far um, for any team that can reduce the biological age against a control group that would age in that same time period um, to reduce the biological age by at least 10 years. But the goal is 20 years in three categories of cerebral, uh, mus muscle and uh, immune function. So got to see a reduction of 20 years to get the grand prize in all three of those categories. And I want to achieve this without a single pharmaceutical and without a single biologic. So I have nothing against stem cells, nothing against exosomes, nothing against peptides. You know, like these are all very helpful tools in medicine, but I want to prove to the world the power of the foundational understanding of physics as a basis for medicine and aligning our body to be its own best healer through the help of physics. And so we're going to be combining hyperbarics. We're going to be combining light therapy. We're going to be combining sound and vibration. We're going to be combining scalar energy. We're going to be combining a lot of these modalities that are based in physics that have kind of been shoved under the rug. And the XPRIZE health span provides such a great container to pursue this because it has a global audience and it has the support and validity of all of these great scientific minds. And I'll be able to build a, an incredible team of some of the smartest people in the world to help prove this out. And we've already seen with some of these tools like electronic, the proper electronic muscle stimulation tools. Um, there's a device called the NX Pro that mimics the signals the brain sends the muscles and recruits the whole muscle. And I mean, I've already seen 65 year olds, 70 year olds, 75 year olds walking out of my friend's gym you know, four or five, six months later, looking 20 years younger in their muscle function, muscle mass, you know, so like that, I'm like, oh, that's in the bag. Like, I already know that technology exists. Combine that with hyperbarics for faster recovery time. And we're going to do some amazing things. Um, but yeah, and then when it comes to immune function, you've got hyperbarics as such a powerful tool to heal the gut and boost immune function. Um, and then cognitive hyperbarics is very powerful for that. But you layer in, you layer in training the body's nervous system. And I think the key for people in that age bracket of 65 to 80, the key is that they've been in, in stress so long, you know, and they're not, you know, they're so they're tired, they don't have efficient energy flow in their bodies. And so we're going to fix that. And um, so yeah, that's, that's a, a big announcement. And I'm really excited to be pursuing that, um, that X prize. And it's not about winning the prize purse, right? Obviously, that'd be fantastic. But it's more about, you know, shooting for the moon, landing among the stars, helping raise awareness for the power of physics based medicine and the truth that like here we are culturally brainwashed to understand what it is to be a human being. Right. This human being is, you know, X set of compounds and processes and medicine is how you fix and heal it. And with the X Prize and, and my mission with with beam hyperbarics 
is to transition from human being to human beaming. So a human beaming is cellularly, cerebrally, and energetically optimized for life on this planet and beyond. You know, like if we ever want to get off this rock, you know, like people talk about wanting to go be in Mars and it's like our bodies do not survive in space right now very long. We lose muscle mass, we lose bone density, but I believe there are layers to unlock in our DNA and layers to unlock in our potential as human beings to transition into that human beaming that's, that's chosen to evolve into a more powerful state, a more peaceful state and really reach the true potential that humanity has to offer. And we're just at the beginning of that, you know, and I think past civilizations may have understood some of these things a little more than we do now, but I want to bring that realization, that epiphany to humanity and help change that paradigm for the future of human health and, you know, build a world where our children aren't subjected to pharmaceuticals and, you know, these lame diagnoses that have no bearing on the actual physics of reality, you know? Um, and that's where like mineral balance comes into play is so important. And my friend Barton Scott um, has a company called um, Upgraded Formulas, and he has developed a way to nanotize minerals and, um, and make them very bioavailable no matter how inflamed or sick you are. And so utilizing minerals um, and balancing the elements in the body to increase cellular function and, and, and um, level out cellular function is another very powerful tool that we're going to be using as well. So, and congratulations about your request. I'm, I'm rooting for you. Super pumped. Thank you. Excited to see how that turns out. Um, one question I had was when you're talking about the aging and like the, the rate that people are aging, how do you measure that? Cause I'm sure it's more than, Oh, how old do you feel? Yeah. So there's various, um, cellular processes. Um, one of the things with like the glycan age are glycans are like these different types of sugars that show up in cells at different points in time. And there's different characteristics of glycans that represent inflammation and like the inflammation rate throughout the body. Um, as we age with chronic inflammatory diseases is something that can be measured. Um, the Dundon pace cofactors co in some other biological processes, um, including telomere lengths and other things. So it's a, it's a host of different biological markers that are kind of analyzed against one another and then compared to, you know, other populations and, um, done in pace is good. Telomere length is pretty good, but the glycan age is actually one of the most accurate against controls and also shows response to intervention really well. So like if you measure your glycan age before doing a round of hyperbarics or before doing some stem cell therapy or some other um, longevity or anti-aging type modality, or even starting a, a healthy diet and a big exercise regimen, um, you'll see a response in the glycans really fast. And uh, it shows a really accurate portrayal of biological age when you measure that in uh, all across different populations and different disease states. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's complex, but it's a fun thing to look into because we have more tools at our disposal now than we ever have. And like having access to these biological age marker tools and lab tests that are, you know, a few hundred bucks um, is really cool for anyone to be able to see the results of what they're doing for their body. Um, so, you know, even if you don't have access to hyperbarics, but you're on a quest to, um, to change your lifestyle and become healthier, like look into the glycan age um, testing because you do a test right before, get a two pack and do a test, you know, six months later or a year later after you've gone through and when you can look at data and see data shifting, it really inspires you to push harder on the changes that you're making and to keep up with those habits. Um, and that's one of the cool things about hyperbarics is like, if you've got an aura ring, you know, and you see your sleep getting better, you see your heart rate lowering, you know, you see your stress markers going lower as you're doing hyperbarics. It's like that immediate feedback. And then if you're getting blood work done, and you're seeing your C-reactive protein levels go down, your inflammation markers go down, you're seeing your, your thyroid function increasing, you're seeing your other hormones in, um, function increasing due to the limiting of inflammation in the body. Like it really encourages you to continue on um, and make it a part of your lifestyle. Okay. That's a, a little bit over my head, <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I appreciate your, your extensive knowledge. That's, really impressive. So before we go, we got to, unfortunately, we've got to wrap things up. Just want to say thank you tremendously for coming on. 
I am super appreciative of your time and just your, your knowledge about this and your enthusiasm too. I really appreciate, I can tell that you're really energetic and happy to talk about this stuff. I, it's really refreshing. So where can people find you on social media? And if they're in the Austin area and looking to get in contact with you, where can they do that? Um, so beam dot do, um, B E A M dot D O will redirect to beam hyperbarics.com. Um, my socials are on there. Um, at I am Sam Womack, um, is my Instagram personal Instagram. Um, but I talk about hyperbarics there. Um, so that's, that's kind of where to find me. Um, you'll see more updates and then coming soon is human beaming dot com um and human beaming dot life um and that's going to be where there'll be updates about our pursuit of the x prize um the team name is human beaming and uh, the slogan is let there be life so yeah so the keep an eye out for okay. that as well and once again i want to wish you all the best of luck on your quest and to my viewers i will see you next time thank you so much david for having me on really appreciate it